Hello everyone and welcome back to Stud I. Today we are going to learn that how can we measure the IPD. IPD is basically the interpupillary distance or the distance between the center of two pupils, right? So this is the interpupillary distance. It is a distance between centers of two pupil which is IPD, interpupillary distance. So we are going to learn that how we are going to evaluate the distance between two eyes if the patient has strabismus in his eyes, right? So what I mean is that in the case of squint, if patient has squint, then in case of squint, how you can evaluate the IPD? So here in this picture, you can see that this is the right eye and here this is the left eye. So how you can calculate the IPD or how can you measure the IPD in case where the patient has strabismus? Here in this picture, you can and see and it is obvious that the left eye is straight while the right eye has the exo tropia it means that the left eye, right eye has moved outward right so the left eye is straight but the right eye has the exotropia so what does it mean that the eyeball has moved outward right so eyeball is moved towards the uh, outward direction or to away or has moved away from the nose so this is the nose this eye is straight is looking straight such that the fovea is aligned right but what what is happening over here that fovea is now here because the eye has turned out right so in that case where the eyes are not aligned properly the binocular single vn has been affected how you can measure the interpupillary distance in that case so we are going to see this today in the video so to measure the interpupillary distance you should know a single protocol that you and the patient the examiner and the patient should be in front of each other such that you both are at the same level so the examiner and patient should be at the same level and what is the most important thing that your level should be same and you should be in front of each other so this is the examiner this is you basically who is going to measure the interpupillary distance and this is the patient who is here for the measurement of the interpupillary distance and here you can see this eye has moved outward so the here is exotropia while this eye is ortho right orthophoric or is straight so now how are you going to measure the interpupillary distance in this case always remember that what happens in squint is that when the do one eye, the dominant eye, so dominant eye is basically the orthophoric one. So when the dominant eye is closed, it means that if you ask the patient to close the dominant eye, the deviated eye will tend to move straight in order to fixate, right? So what I mean is that when you will close your eye, when you will close your left eye, what will happen that this right eye with exotropia will move such that the eye can be aligned or it is straight now in order to see correctly, right? So what will happen that uh, in squint suppression occurs and what happens then the dominant eye sees the image while the uh, suppressed eye or the squinted eye is suppressed. So here what happens when you close your eyelid, you close your left eye, what will happen that the right eye will move from outward position towards the nose in order to be straight, right? So what you have to do is that this is a key point in order to measure the IPD in patients with the squint. So what you have to do is that ask the patient to close his left eye and what will happen that this exo eye, the eye which, is, which was in the exo position will now move towards the nose in order to get straightened. So how it will look like? So now when you have asked the patient to close his left eye, what happened that the right eye, while 
the left eye is closed it becomes straight and now you have to do the same uh, method to calculate the interpupillary distance as you do in the normal patients right so what you are going to do is that you will close your right eye so examiner's right eye is aligned with the patient's left eye while examiner's left eye is aligned with patient's right eye when you are sitting in front of the patient so what will you do you will ask the patient who has the squint to close his uh, eye which is straight and what will happen the right eye or the eye in which there is squint it will tend to move straight and at the same time you have to close your right eye and the eye that are aligned now this line this eye is now aligned right so what you will do is the eyes which are now straight ahead and aligned you have to place the scale the scale should be placed zero marking of the scale should be placed at the temporal limbus of the right eye and then eventually you'll ask the patient to uh, open his left eye and you have to close your left eye right so it is opposite in the case of squint you what you are doing is that you are trying to fix ask the patient to fixate so that eye may get aligned and your pupillary distance may get measured right so you will put the scale at the temporal limbus of the right eye which is now straight but was in exo position while the patient's left eye was closed in the second step you what you are going to do you are going to say the patient to open his left eye when he will open his left eye what will happen that this eye will get deviated so now what happened when the patient opens his left eye when patient opens his left eye now the left eye is opened right so when the patient opens his left eye what happens that the right eye goes back to its exotropic position that was away but you don't have to move the scale so this is a scale which has reading on it and you have just aligned you aligned the temporal limbus to the zero while your right eye was closed now in the second step you have to ask the patient to open his left eye and you have to close your left eye so that the patient's left eye is okay so that the patient's left eye is now aligned with the examiner's right eye right so here you can see these both eyes are now straightened so what you have to do is now place the see that what is the reading coming over here in centimeters okay you are usually using the simple centimeter scale so first marking was that while the patient was have closing his left eye and the right eye gets straightened you have to place a zero scale zero marking at the temporal limbus of the patient's right eye while your right eye is closed and the eyes which are straight you have to place a zero reading at the temporal limbus now then immediately what you have to do that while you align the zero marking at temporal limbus you will ask the patient to open his left eye and close your left eye and ask him to see at the right eye of the examiner you have to ask the patient to see at your eyes while patient was while your right eye was closed these eyes the, the eye right eye gets straightened you have to ask the patient to look at the uh, at your left eye similarly over here while you have closed your left eye and patient has opened now left eye and ask him to either close the right eye what will happen that this eye is already straight so it, there will be no any effect but if the patient has alternate squint what happens will happen that if both eyes have exotropia then you have to ask the patient to close his right eye and so that this uh, eye if the eye has a squint it gets straightened and ask him to now look at the examiner's right eye or in your right eye and you have to place the uh, scale and uh, you have to see that how much reading is coming up to the nasal limbus so temporal limbus to nasal limbus suppose the reading is 60 centimeter sorry 6 centimeters so IPD 
here this is the distance ipd where the eyes are straight while at distance what happens it your eyes are straight so that is why we are doing this procedure because giving patient a distant target and can then calculating the ipd is a little bit difficult task right so if this this is an easiest method how you can calculate the distance pd so here the reading is suppose 6 cm while you will convert this centimeter into the millimeter it will be 60 millimeters so the ipd of this patient is 60 millimeters right so this is how you can calculate the ipd in patients with the squint so remember the only key point is that if patient has the squint you just need to take the monocular reading so you just need to close the eye of the patient as well all the measurements are similar to the normal patient's ipd measurement but the only difference is that you now are have to ask the patient to close his one eye while the other eye being tested right so i hope you got the point what i mean to say in this video and in case of any query you can comment in comment section thank you so much